Wendy Lee joining us in just a moment. And if you haven't come across Wendy before, well, my goodness, you are in for a treat. If you have come across Wendy before, then you'll be just as excited as we are because Wendy is just so wonderful. And like Candace, uh, her, um, her work, her, her role here is very, very inspired and and she will share her inspirations with us. So thank you so much for being with us, Wendy, and welcome into our Zoom room. Good morning, Linda. How do you follow that? What a beautiful lady. What beautiful energy. And we have a very similar situation, which is we're, we're on this brink of this exciting new beginning. And at last, people like Candice and me, we can start telling the whole truth not and keep it not keep all this information small and that's so so exciting and we're all joining together as one and that's what we're talking about as you know today and look at us all as one today joining together to learn more to be more to expand more of who we are it's this is the time we were born to be here we have the most amazing gifts that are, if they're not ignited already, they are about to be in each and every one of us. And this is why they, when I call my guides and angels they, because I don't know who they, or what they are, they're just they. And when we are talking about today, what they would like to do is clear the energy between you and source energy and get you to understand there's nobody, nobody who's any less than or any more than anybody else because we're in the same system. And the way that it was explained to me many, 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 many years ago was, okay, let's look at the sunflower. How many in the healing centers have planted a sunflower and I don't know if you can see my board here but I've got two sunflowers two sunflower seeds and they're just tiny one's black and one's white but that's the tiny tiny seeds that they are now that we know will grow a sunflower it has and contains all the information it needs to grow an eight foot or even a two foot it doesn't matter all contained in that little little seed but to ignite that seed, to get that energy going, it needs life force. It needs life energy. And where does that come from? It comes from source energy. So if we imagine, if we imagine the sunflower, you say, well, where does the sunflower come from? The sunflower comes from the seed. But what created the seed? That must have been an amazing, intelligent, creative, source, forceful, energy to have the mind to create a seed that can put all its intelligence into that tiny thing and with a bit of action nurturing and idea woo, we get a sunflower do you not find that most amazing and we are in the same system so this little sunflower original idea was source energy came from source energy and the same source energy that created planets and galaxies and universes. Can you imagine the intelligence of that? And originally that source energy created souls and it created souls so that it could experience who it was. Because if you imagine just your consciousness with nothing to look at or smell or feel or touch, you can only be your consciousness. So the creator created souls so that it could see more of itself, like in a mirror image. And then from there, the souls, because just like the sunflower seeds, how many sunflower seeds in one sunflower? How many? Hundreds, isn't there? So one soul created hundreds of its own little seeds. But it wanted more than just to experience love and light and or glory are here, it wanted to experience the opposite so that it could really appreciate the love and light. So not only did the creator create souls that then went on to create us or the vehicle for us as souls to have an experience in, 
the creator also created the opposite of itself, which was the dark, so that we had the full experience, light and dark, light and dark, light and dark. We are all still in that source energy. But the further we got into the dark as the human side of us, it's like putting these seeds right down here. They couldn't create. If you planted a sunflower seed six foot under, it, would, it, it couldn't create anything. It couldn't be a sunflower. But by planting that seed further up, it can then create itself more of itself do you see so as human beings we have learned that the only we are all one is if we are all one family or all one club or all one color skin or all one race it's we we separated ourselves and the further away from the main source love energy we came, the more we separated ourselves away from it. So we have this idea that we're completely cut off with it until we appease and please this source energy love, which most people call God of some description. Suddenly we have to please it to be anything more than who we are. Of course we don't because the whole system was let's create. Let's create. Now, the creator created a sunflower seed, and the sunflower seed only has the consciousness to grow more sunflower seeds. It's pretty damn clever, anyway, but that's all it has the consciousness of. We have the consciousness to create anything, anything we want. We have our own seeds of creation. Our seeds of creation are thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our energy and emotion. That's how the whole system was designed. It's so damn clever. We have a thought, we put out the thought, we feel how we're gonna feel when we get it, it comes to us and we can live it. And we are living in that, except our thoughts have got darker and darker and darker. So the mirror image, which is how this operates, this whole machinery operates, the mirror image suddenly becomes darker and darker and darker. So the worst day you have, 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 because the universe is a mirror. That's how it's designed. We've been taught that you have to be special to have anything to do with this God, life, force, intelligence. We have to not be evil. And if we've done something wrong, we then have to suffer for the rest of our lives to appease this creator. Can you start clearing how that has been part of a human system to keep us in a group that has no connection whatsoever or no perceived connection whatsoever with source energy? It's a really clever idea for politicians, religions, very, the very wealthy. They don't want us to know we have connection to source energy and we're all in this together. So we've gone into so much separation, but we are now learning to bring it back together. We're learning that we are all one. We're learning that what I do affects you over there. And the virus, my goodness me, hasn't that shown up? That has shown up to so many people who, who completely thought they were separate, had no, had no um, connection to source energy at all. It's, it's inconceivable that we're not connected to source energy because without life force energy, we have no life force. And even when we die, the life force energy is still going through us to, to turn us back to dust. Our consciousness goes back to up here, but the life force is still going through us. The life force, same creative life force that goes through these sunflower seeds. And as I say, this, this, this barrier, this, um, the, the man-made laws have come into place so that we can't experience the, the, the greatness of who we are. And suddenly, we're being told about the law of attraction and we're told about this and we're told about that. And we're thinking, well, it's all right for everybody else, but what about me? And the exciting thing is that you can't not be. This is, this is who we are. This is what we were born to be. Plus, if you're here on the planet on this particular lifetime, we've, we've done all these journeys over and over again, and we do understand and remember where we came from, and we will continue to keep 
striving to teach other people where how to connect or how to reconnect because we're never not connected how to start using this to our advantage and what a super super day because I think the question, one of the questions before was, what can we personally do? What can we personally do to make anything better? We can start really clearing out our own stuff. We can start deciding that if we have this vehicle, we have this mind, and this, our mind is part of the bigger creative mind, we have access to the creative mind and we can create whatever we want. Individually, it is not selfish to start creating exactly what you'd like to be surrounded with. So when you look out to your life and you look at your health, you look at your relationships, you look at your home, whatever it is that you're looking at, put today is the day to shine the light on every area of your life look at it closely don't ignore it if you're in an unhappy relationship don't go out in the garden do gardening so you can ignore the unhappy relationship stop put the light on it and think if I'm creating either create a happy relationship within the relationship you're in or create a new relationship this is start this is such a lovely day to plant your own seeds of creation and like any seed that we're going to plant, you don't then go and dig it up. You leave it quietly. You leave it quietly. But the same way as when we plant these seeds, we nurture them. We give them what they need because seeds lay dormant when they're not encouraged if you like to grow so we have our seed which is our thought and then we will leave it dormant and just like leaving these sort seeds on my windowsill they can't do anything they can't be creative they're just seeds to anybody else they're just seeds and nothing and look at the potential in them Look at the potential if we just put it into action. Let's put them into fertile soil. So when you have a new idea, put it into fertile soil. Water it. Put some action into it. Put some emotion into it. If you want to go and feed the starving ch children in Africa, put that's a, a seed of a thought. That has the creative source energy thought behind it. So start working and nurturing that thought. The moment a thought gives you passion, you know you are completely then in this creative, creative energy. And each one of us needs to be self-centered. Can you imagine nearly 8 billion people on this planet if we all just centered ourselves? If we were all not selfish, not grabbing for other people, but just knowing that there isn't any lack. This creative energy is eternal. It's, it, it's, it's mind blowing. It just is endless, do you see? And we get told we're endless and eternal, but we, we don't kind of get that. But it's, it, it constantly creates. And energy can't be destroyed. So even if we perceive something to be destroyed, it will turn to something else. So when our body dies, you know that it turns back to spirit. Everything is still energy and it's creative and creative. Now, if we can take this barrier of not being good enough to um, warrant attention from source energy, if we can say, right, if I'm part of the system and I create this and I plant this seed and it's a creative thought energy seed, what then do I need to do? You need to relax. You need to allow this source energy to flow through you. Now we have a connection. There's little us here and between the souls, us and us, we've put like a middleman, which we can call our higher self. And this higher self is the one that is trying to attempt to get this information through to us so that we can create that person that we know we came to be. Whether that's the time we give, the love we give, the hugs we give, the attention we give, the food we give, it doesn't matter. We know what we had designed for this lifetime. But we have wrapped ourselves in, in not being good enough 
from this lifetime. It's time to clear that and say, not only am I good enough, but I have these gifts. And I have as many gifts as anybody else on the planet. I'm simply just not using them. I haven't planted my seeds yet, and I'm not nurturing them yet. So today, if you look, if you imagine this life force is flowing through you and wherever you plant these seeds, whether you plant them in the weed garden or in the garden, they're going to grow. They're going to grow. And if you give attention to something that is less than loving, less, less than kind, then that seed grows. So on a personal point of view, there's, there isn't any room. I hope you all know this now for gossiping about someone else. There's no more room for feeling um, animosity about someone else because we are all one. So if we're putting that out, we're gonna get it back and we're, and, we're, and we're putting all that energy out into the one. Does that make sense? It's nodding, yeah? So this is an exciting day. This is such an exciting day to say, let me have a thought. Let me put all this thinking into a thought. Because the thinking is a bit like um, clay. It, 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 lots of bits of clay or, or, or Play-Doh, they're, they're just thoughts. But start just thinking, but start molding them into a, a, a constructive thought. What does sunshine, if you were to be a sunflower and you loved what was around you, what does that look like? Now, if that looks like a healthy body, start getting in touch with all this and allowing this life force to start bringing you a healthy body. But if you're planting every single day the seed of an unhealthy body by moaning and complaining and talking about it and living in it, you are just creating the more of the same. That is why it's vital to look at what you are doing. What are you thinking? What are you putting out? Because it's no good loving the whole universe and going to your healing centers and everything else and then talking about the bitch down the road. Because that is, that's the energy that's leaving us. That's the plant seed we're planting. And that's the seed that's going to grow. So we need to clean up our thoughts. We need to clean up our actions. Clean up what we're planting. Let's get the whole world planting sunshine. Wouldn't that be lovely? Do you want to open it for questions, Teresa? Yeah, that's spot on, actually, Wendy. Um, I'm just quite impressed. All morning, uh, all the speakers are, are very tuned in, and, and I have to say, they're not looking at the chat. So, um, so that's quite interesting. So, one I of the can't see a thing. Once no, exactly. It, it's I'm literally well. just come in, and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll get ready to ask the question in a moment. And there you asked it. So. Um, uh, so one of the questions is, does Wendy have any guidance for neutralizing animosity from other people? Neutral so animosity that's coming at you. Yeah. Yeah. Drop. I have a lovely expression of drop the rope. Okay. Which means if you are in a type of war, one person's got one end and one's got the other. And you're, oh, look at that. You're doing that. Yeah. Until one person wins. Drop rope. Take the energy out and put your energy somewhere else. It's, it's a training, you have to train yourself. Because actually we quite, or the old us, used to quite enjoy a good ding dong or meeting that animosity. Then you go away and you say, why am I meeting the vibration of animosity? What am I feeling that about? Because it won't be necessarily about that person, but there's something else that you're feeling about because the world is a mirror. So if you're meeting animosity or anger or whatever you're meeting, so drop the rope, go away and think about yourself. Take it back to yourself. Say thank you to, the, to that person. Do you see? Because when you take responsibility for yourself, you know that anybody who comes in is to trigger something in you. It's not about them. It's so that you can look at you and who you are in that situation. Do you see? So if you start feeling that animosity back, it's for you to come away and go, no, I, that's not who I am anymore. And those people just disappear. Does that, does that answer the question? 
treat it this way. Yeah, and I think it's such a wonderful metaphor, isn't it? It's one that I know Linda shared with me um, and that I've shared with many through through the coaching that I do. So, uh, and as soon as people hear that, drop the rope, you can see drop them just go, oh, okay. <laughs> I can, yeah, because it's when we think the only energy that we have is through the energy that we can get from other people and the, and the vast majority of humanity thinks that they have to get their energy from other people we have to we have to fight for it when you realize your energy is here why, why would you fight for a battery when you can plug into the mains yeah yeah and i think that's a big realization isn't it um again a lot of people that i've been working with particularly recently is all about hooking them back up so that their light is self-sufficient yeah. Self-centered, isn't it? You know, if you had a porthole and it was up here, yeah. just just clean it, just open it up every morning. Go, oh yes, I remember. I, I've got a skylight up there. Let's let's open that up. Absolutely. Good. Any final thoughts, Wendy? To have a look today, I really do feel strongly that we spend a lot of time out there trying to heal other people, heal other things, heal the world, the planet, everything else. But in the next few days or so, if something comes up in you, really decide. There's a lot of crying going on for advanced souls. Myself, very much included, and I love it, I love crying. It's just such a lovely release. But it's, there's, there's stuff that's coming up from, 30 maybe 40 years ago that you're carrying balls of energy that need to come up for a ball of energy to come up to be released it needs to be triggered so the moment you're triggered into sadness or anger or frustration or whatever else it is recognize that it's not what's happening now it's just a ball of energy that needs to be released and you can literally say to your guides your angels will you help me please release that and if you feel tearful milk it for everything you have and say right i'm cleansing something i don't even know what it is i just feel tearful and i need to release and let that go because the clearer we can the the, the, the further we can get out of this and be here the more the, the more help we are to the whole humanity anyway there's no point in us staying in our own juice now but certainly the what i call the advanced party do not be surprised if you've had things kick up last week that are going to come into this week, but it's because somewhere up here you've made up your mind you're worth more. You're worth more. On a Monday morning, um, I do a talk, and tomorrow's going to be all about relationships. If anybody's interested in joining that, would you please um, phone Tara von Speckelson? And I think Lin um, Linda and Teresa both have that number. And I yesterday set myself up a little YouTube. Um, so if you go on to Wendy Lee's Spiritual Guidance on YouTube, there's some videos that we've done before, including the one from Harry Edwards. So hopefully you've all got something to think about. I hope you've all just, to, to, you can feel today, you can feel the excitement, you can feel the lift between us. That is what we want to spread out. Mm. Just do it. And I think... Just as you've been talking as well, Wendy, and hopefully there, there are two other questions that come in, but I feel that probably with what you've just shared now, that's answered some of those. Um, and what's great is these are recorded, so you can go back and, and listen and discern the key things that are, are meaningful for everybody. But just as you're talking, Wendy, I'm just starting to pull threads together for myself. Uh, based on the other talks so you know Sandy earlier was talking about you know each of us being a beautiful twig I added the beautiful bit but you know together we can create a good fire a bonfire of, of light and that's what it is it really is the more we can appreciate how this we are all one then we're, we're expanding everything and what's so lovely if you listen to all the speakers we're all talking love that that really is the vibration of love and we're all in our own way now this is what's so exciting to me is that we're grouping together you know we've hid ourselves hidden ourselves for so many years so come out be counted if if you feel like it you know just you're good enough you're good enough yeah, wonderful. And it reminds me of that wonderful song, um, Make Me a Channel of Thy Peace. Yeah. And when you look at the words there, it really reflects the, the picture that you've drawn. 
um, and making a clear channel is one standing in its own light. Again, picking up on things that both Sandy and uh, Candace has, has shared um, already, along with some of the messages coming in from Tina, is you know stepping more into that light, which is love, influence, you know, removing guilt, worry, concern, all of those things. You know, it's a very me. little service. Do you, you do understand that? Any worry, any guilt, any shame is literally negative goal setting. It doesn't benefit anything at all. There's no benefit at all to it. Nothing. There's no, nothing about worry is going to make anything better. Nothing about being shameful or guilty is going to make anything change. Decide how you want to feel. That's the thing. And aim to go with that. Wonderful. Okay, so and lots of love to everybody. Yeah, and hopefully, maybe I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye now. Have a nice day. Thank you. Oh. Fantastic, fantastic to hear from Wendy there. Thank you so much, Wendy. And